Okay, this is my 2002 BMW 530. I'm gonna explain to you what happened. A couple days ago, it was cold. I came into the car, turned the key as normal. I'm supposed to start the car. And the only thing that happens is the key goes clock, 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 clock. Look at the cluster. No lights came on, nothing. But there's lights inside the interior lights, the dome lights. Everything was working perfect. So I said, okay, what could be the problem? Ignition switch out, and I saw that this thing just spins freely. Like that. Come to find out, this shaft that goes all the way through, this shaft right here, that goes all the way through. Let me see if I can poke at it. The shaft is supposed to go all the way through, and when you stick the key in the ignition, it's supposed to turn. But you see how my moves? Up and down, side to side. It's not supposed to do that. The reason why is because in here, the shaft goes all the way through to the ignition switch, which goes in the ignition switch, which goes in like this. This is the ignition switch. This is the connector. And that's the other half of that shaft that was, I was just playing with. This one is supposed to come out and turn the ignition switch and turn the key on and allows you to start the car. Apparently mine is broken because when I turn it still, Nothing happens. Right now, I'm just going all the way around and nothing's happening, it's supposed to turn. If you can see it, it's supposed to turn, but nothing's happening, it's just poking out, poking, going back in. Cause I'm turning this thing all the way around right now. I don't know if you can see. Get a better angle. It's supposed to turn. So initially when I got in the car, I thought the problem was the steering lock because the steering was locked. So I went online. Did a lot of reading, and what they said was to drill this hole, drill a hole right here, and then stick a needle nose or a pick, and pull out the spring, and the steering will unlock. Did just that, went back to turn the, start the car, turn the key, still nothing. I said, okay, what's, what's the problem? So as you see, it'll turn, this one turns all the way, cycles the key, and this is the ignition lock. And this is the shaft. That broke on mine. See, this one turns the way it's supposed to. These bolts I got from when I did the clutch on this car. So these hold the clutch on. It's basically just 13 millimeter bolts. And the bolts that came on this thing. That are supposed to hold this thing down. That's supposed to hold the plate down in here. Which I'm going to show you on this one. Is has no thread. Has no, what's it called? Has no head to spin it out with. All right, so the secret to taking this steering wheel, this airbag off, is taking a flathead and sticking it in that hole right there. Let me see if I can see it. In this hole right here, stick it like that. Like that. Because of the spring, you want to push. You want to push down. Just do this motion. Puts the screwdriver in flat like this, and there's, there should be a, a little springy, a little tension on it. Then pull the air back out gently and unplug it. Unplug these two connectors by lifting up that clip right there. Just lift up. Let me see if I can hold the airbag and use a flat head screwdriver at the same time. Just do one of these. Just that's it that and then like that and that's it usually when you're doing this you should unplug your battery but since my key is going to be off the whole time anyways it shouldn't matter but whatever you do don't turn the key on because then you'll have an airbag light and you have to get that cleared by the shop so when taking it off, keep the steering wheel as straight as possible. So when you put the steering wheel back on, your steering wheel is not like this, going straight or this, or even upside down. Cause then you gotta get it lined the right now way. Now that the steering wheel is straight, you get a 16 mil socket. It could be three eighths, half inch, but it can't be quarter inch. 
because that's not strong and that's not enough leverage. So I got this extension, extended one from, uh, what's it called? Harbor Freight. It extends out, in and out. So what I'm gonna do is just hold the steering wheel with my knee like this, push up, and then break it loose so the steering wheel doesn't turn. Oh my God. It would've been nice to have a steering lock. So I wouldn't have to work this, but oh my god, it's loose. Now what you do is go back, make sure the steering was still straight, and continue on. So now, now just thread it down. Oh my god. And that's the bolt that holds your steering wheel in. Stick it somewhere safe. Cause you kinda need that to drive the car. So what you do now, since the bolt's out, unplug this. This is your airba airbag, airbag harness. And this is for the volume control buttons. Since everything's out, just pull out slowly. Cause you can actually punch yourself in the face with this thing. If you see there's a notch right there, when you put the steering wheel back in, Get the camera to focus on it. When you put the steering back in, try to match that notch. Now go back to focus, focus. Okay, now I'm gonna use my knee and and left hand right here to wiggle this thing straight out, just like that, just like that. Ta da! Steering wheel's out. Stick this bitch on the roof. And here we are. This is your clock spring, which you should try not to move as much as possible. And these are the bolts that hold it in. It looks like T25. Two. And apparently I'm missing two. What the hell? I've never taken this thing apart before, so it's not good. I guess the last guy had to mess with this thing too. This is a T25. Just stuck it in there. Remember how tight it was so you can tighten it back up. Blah, blah, blah. Out. And out. All two so out. stick them in a safe spot. And I need to find the plugs for these things. I don't know where you plug in. I found one right here. It's a white connector. Just push down and pull out. Ah, ouch. That one's out. What else? There's a black connector back here. I guess for the wiper. Out. Try to remember where everything goes because you might have, you're gonna have to put this thing back together. And there's a green one back here. Out. And there's a white one down here too. Out. Now, I'm assuming all you do is pull straight out. Just like that. It's out. Put it somewhere out of the way. It's not gonna hurt anything. And here we go. Now, this is my new used part. Looks about the same. Yeah. So this part fits 2000 BMWs to 2003 E39 5 Series with a manual transmission because automatic transmission pieces are different and it doesn't fit an E46 3 Series at all. They're completely different. Let's put this aside. Let's set the airbag on the roof too. So get this harness out of the way. As you can see, that's everything right there. The bottom of the clock spring. This is, I guess, the, this is the indicator connector, and this is my wiper connector. And this is the, the connector that plugs into the switch that reads your key that allows the car to start. And obviously, the ignition switch still plugged in. Let me take it apart. Let's pull this connector out.
It's kind of complicated doing it with one hand, but I can manage. And that's your ignition switch. These things do go bad on these cars, but mine is still fire, so I'm just gonna keep using it. Leave it right there, so we're safe. And this is the piece right here. This is the sucker. And before I did this, I already pulled. If I pulled the close the stock out, I already what's it called? I already I don't know what the heck this is. I already pulled out the the stereo, pulled it all the way out and pushed it all the way. Down. And this is the annoying part: the these bolts, because you have to hammer them out or chisel them out. Use a chisel or some form of flathead to get it out. Because this is just a 13 millimeter bolt on the bottom, but you just gotta hammer it out. Let's do it. been here for like 10 minutes now and that's pretty good so I'm gonna start on this side so this thing doesn't just fall right out when I take it out use the trusty wood hammer I got a free second to take out my hand. I'm gonna take all the way out because I want this, this thing to stay. Once I get this one all the way out, this one's almost there. Just gotta dig around a little bit more. Gotta dig around a little bit more. Go spinning, 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 spinning. That's just what's really annoying about this job because. I have to stay here and turn and turn and turn. I'm gonna park in here for like 20 minutes now. Huh? I get to pull these things out. I'm gonna take this side all the way out. Hopefully, it'll release some tension from that other one. That's what the boat looks like. It's just a 13 millimeter bolt thread with no head. Yeah, buddy, it's out. Both of them. I can take this plate out. That holds it there in. It's a little scratched up, but that's not gonna hurt anything. Now the only other thing left is this ring right here. The flathead to spin it so I can have it somewhere kind of visible so you can see. So this holds this this clip holds this ring down, which holds the whole thing down because right now I can't even slide it out. It's definitely stuck in there. So I'm going to pop this clip off and see what else I need to get out. Best to do it with two flatheads. Just the way you see I'm doing it. Be careful not to like stab yourself with flatheads or hit your fist on this big piece of metal. Yeah, buddy. So you pry it out like that. Then you pry it like this. slide out yeah it's moving a little freer now this is the other piece it looks just like the first piece that was on top of it but this one has no no what's it called groove the ring right there because I, I don't want it to go anywhere I can't pull up oh, there it is right there is your steering lock mine is already out because I took the spring out and that's the cylinder and in here Yeah. This 
is a part of the stair locking me mechanism. So let's see. What else is broken in here? This thing is a little... Yes, that's another piece of it. That's the reason why I didn't want to replace this shaft because I don't know how to put this plastic piece back in. Or oh, I don't want to hurt something else. But see, that's where it broke. Obviously, where it broke. That's the reason why I was turning my key and nothing would happen. And there's the shaft. I guess it goes on like this. Yeah, like that. I bet I could just glue it back in and stick it in there. See what happens. Put everything back together, go to starter, and then the glue's going to snap. And then I gotta do everything back over again. But this is the shaft that broke. Since I don't need this anymore, it's trash. Yeah, so this is what my car looks like today. Airbag, steering wheel, clock spring. And yeah. This is it. Fun, fun, fun. Everything goes back in the way it should. But well, I just figured out this is my old steering lock. I figured out this fell out and I didn't see, I, I didn't see that it fell out, fell out. Actually, supposed to go in like this, and this goes into the bottom like that. Like a shaft. So, so what you're supposed to do is make sure this goes in like that, inside there like that, and then you stick this on top like this. And the steering shaft obviously goes in through there. And then you stick it. And then everything's supposed to be like that. Like this. That's how it's supposed to go into the car. Don't forget, because I almost did. That's my broken steering shaft right there. For some reason, the new one's not going all the way in. Let me see. Let me drive the old one back in and see what happens. And it doesn't go all the way in too, so there's something I'm probably doing wrong. Let's find out. So this shaft can come out a little bit more. Let me put the bolt back in and see if I can pull it out a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, it can come out. So. Okay, let's see that, guys. Let me stick this ring in there. The name of the game is to pull this thing out. I'm using a, a wrench or a plier, whatever you want to call this. Using this to, to pull this, this shaft out so I can put the clip in, that ring, this ring right here. So I can fit it in. That's the only way to do it. You can see I put the ring back in and I put this piece back in, which is the double-sided, the one without a groove. So don't get it mixed up. Now, hold this, please. I'm gonna make sure this thing's tight so it doesn't stick in. Be careful. We got a little bit. That's fine, that's fine. Wait, mm -hmm. Go. Thanks to my little assistant here. Okay, this. 
Mm-hmm. 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 And like Don King, baby. There you go, girl. Thank you. Thanks, son. Look at you. Just like that. Now, the only thing I recommend is going back in and making sure this thing goes is all the way down. It's all the way in there. So it doesn't fly out. Now, the next part is sticking this bit back in. This piece goes this way, goes out. And now the two new. The two new bolts. These are essentially 13 millimeter thread bolts. So any 13 should do. Try to tighten them down even as possible because you don't want this thing going in. Time to cook it. I'm gonna loosen this side up because I think I went too far down on this side first. And I'll shake everything, make sure it's to it. Keep still turning freely. Time to snug this. Try not to do it too tight, or this bolt will break, or it'll strip this thing, and then you're gonna need another one. Like I said, go back and forth. Try to snug it down as even as possible. Feels tight enough. This side, tight enough. Yep, feels good. Switch this thing in, the ignition switch in, and then I turn these screws. Uh -huh. Turned it, snugged it, but not too tight, of course. Turned it, snugged it, not too tight. Next part is is this. This ring goes in downward faces down with the groove out let's see if I get this thing to focus on it you know what I mean you can see it so take this all the way back out rest it right there glue side down and it sits flushed <clears throat> now, next part is put the harness on top Plug in the ignition switch. Plug in the ignition switch like this. Like this. Push it down, and as you see, and then you push this clip in too, like that. Wiggle it, jiggle it. Stay in there. And now, time for this big sucker. Stick this thing in there. Make sure it's not upside down, of course. And stick this in there. We can just try out of the way. Boom, boom, boom. Just like that. Grab the screws, stick them back in. The T25s. Stick them back in there. Now I'm gonna go to the dealership a little later to grab a couple more screws for this. But for now, I'm just gonna have to put this in like this because I can't find any more screws. 
any screws that fit that. Of course, don't over tighten it because you can you can break this piece right here. Good and pretty promising, I guess. Now I'll go back and plug everything back in. The white connector that went here. Stick her back in. Make sure it clips. Tug on it, make sure it doesn't come out. The black connector that controls the washer, the wipers. Make sure it clips in, doesn't come back out. <clears throat> The two connectors that were under here, the green one, which goes right here. Stick her back in, make sure she doesn't come out. Ooh. Now the white connector. Yep. Make sure it doesn't come back out. Push it in. And what else? The ignition switch is plugged in. What else? What else? I guess I'm gonna finish everything up here first and then pop the stairwell back in. Okay, on top of here, through that loop right there, there's a zip tie. Time to replace it. It holds that harness in place just like that. Just like that. Just like that, just like that, just like that, some more, just like that. Don't go all the way tight now. Cutters, cut it out. Nice. Because if you're gonna do it, why not do it right? Earlier was this bracket right here. This plastic bracket that goes over or around the ignition switch, really. And goes in there like that too. And also, let me put the T30 in there first. As you can see, I don't know if you can see that. Get it pretty tight. Now, this is the second bolt that goes down here and goes up. But. This bracket goes in there too. I guess it goes in between. And this harness goes in here. Just like that. Or maybe, I mean it goes in here. Just like that. Well, long story short, I had to take this thing back off. Because this thing, the way it goes, is it sandwiches right between there. And I didn't know. When I took it out, I wasn't paying attention. So it goes between the plastic bracket and the aluminum piece. And then you just tighten up the T30 on the bottom like that. Tighten everything up, make sure everything's aligned right. Because this is just the weight. I guess it stabilizes the steering spring back in there. White connector. Green connector. I left it loose, so I plugged it back in. No room. And the other white connector. Plugged in, plugged in. Check, check. Check, check. And I left this one plugged in, I never unplugged it. I'm trying to put the other screws back in. Because I remember there was one that I wanted to take it out of first. I don't want to forget that. Now try to remember not to turn the key on until the airbag is plugged back in or you'll have an airbag light. That's pretty much it. 
Thing is tight, plugged in. Don't turn the key on. See, everything moves now. So I'm gonna sit this thing back in. And the next thing I'm going to do is, since those are already tight, I'm gonna stick the cover in that goes down here. I do anything else, I gotta get this out. This is what I was used to using to start the car before. Get it out and plug it back in. And now I'm not gonna do it. plug it in. And swap this freaking connector. You gotta make sure that O ring. This rubber o-ring goes between this. That's a, that's supposed to spin like that. This and this. If not, I don't know what's gonna happen, but just don't forget it. Now push this thing in. All this thing does is clips in. It actually clips in pretty tight. That's about it. And now, take this clip out, because it was left in here, stick it on top of this. Now, like I said, these screws, I'm going to replace them by new ones on Monday when the dealer's open. And I'll just come back and replace them in. This plastic Phillip just screws right in there, holds it in. Now that part is in. What I'm gonna do now is stick the steering wheel back in, start the car, and make sure everything works fine. So this is my main key start it. <laughs> Try to put it on as straight as possible. Let me get these out of here. So I don't forget them. I have the steering wheel aligned perfectly. Plug in the connectors for the airbag. Well, first the connectors for the volume, the buttons on the steering wheel, and the airbag. And then stick the good old bolt back in there. You see that? I don't know if you can see that, but there's another place for connector. There was nothing plugged into that. I'm going to tighten it all the way in. And then get my ratchet. Look for my trusty number 16. The stereo locks now. It's good. Before it didn't, which will make this a lot easier. I'm gonna do this so I don't mess with the lock too much. Put my knee on and hold it up. So I don't put too much weight or pressure on the lock. On the steering. Now the steering was locked like it's supposed to. No turn. And wants to turn. That's nice. So what I'm going to do is 
plug this air bag back in. Plugging it in is just the way, just the exact same way as taking it out. You stick the connector in the hole, make sure it's flush all the way in, and then push it down, and it should be stuck. It should be, it should stay in there. Same thing with the other connector. Same thing with the other connector. Uh -huh. and push it down. Shouldn't come out. Make sure everything is pushed down firm and tight. And then put their bag back in, not upside down. And then push it in. Just push in firmly. Uh -huh. Make sure it clicks. Now I can turn the key on with the steering lock off. Everything works fine. It's indicating because I left it down. Yeah, the wipers work. Their backlight is on because I unplugged the seat before and I didn't get the code clear. But let's see for the start. Yeah, buddy. Success. I shut it off. Turn it on. Off. On. Off. Sit. Now put the rest of the car back together. This is the bottom cover that goes under like this. Like that. And this is the clip that holds it in from the bottom. And this is the other plastic screw. That goes in and holds this clip into place. And stick that back in there. Stick it in. And start trying to screw back in place. It's a Phillips, but this flathead fits in there perfectly. And it works just fine, just does the job. Tight. So everything's tight in there. The last piece is this cover. this big guy right here which is this last piece is this big guy right here aka the kick panel and where the OBA two port goes in that just goes in like this other piece back in put these clips into the hole push down push down push down same on this side In there, push down, and now time for wood trim. Or in my case, I can tear it trim. This must be for the other side, it's too long. Okay, it's right for this side. Just like this. Make sure that's the hole. Stick it in there. Right. And this side goes into nice and tight. So everything's back together now. Works the parts. Let me see if the car still starts. Yes. Me, I can fix that. Buddy, now time to clean up. As you see now, I got a fully running driving car, key turning, starting, working fine. <laughs>